Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my video of how I painted Joyful. I hope you'll enjoy it and give it a thumbs up, and maybe it'll show you some ideas to try yourself in your own watercolor painting. I do hope so. Let's paint. I have a large butterfly bush or bedelia in my garden. It grows for most of the summer and blooms just beautifully. It also has a wonderful fragrance that attracts all kinds of butterflies, including this one, which is called a painted lady. It might also be called an American painted lady, but whatever the case, I took a photograph and I decided I was going to try to paint it. I've been looking at this photograph for a while, wondering some fun approaches to take to it. And then I decided to just go ahead and jump right in. I began my painting with a very simple sketch and brought in some masking fluid. There was some strong light on the branch and throughout the flower. So I'm masking wherever I want to block out and keep some of the strong light or put in some strong bright colors that I don't want to be covered over. Once the masking was dry, I decided to lay in the bright blue sky wash all around the flower, its leaves, and the butterfly, or what showed of it. I took this photograph from underneath, so the butterfly just peeked through the bush. I'm using cobalt blue through and through for this background. And I'm trying to make the color fairly intense because the blue sky was so beautiful in the colors that day and in my photograph. I was using a smaller round brush for the detail work, and now for the larger area in the background, I'm using a flat wash brush. I was attempting to make some nice, even strokes of color. However, the way things were drying that day, I didn't get too even. Once the blue dried, I laid down some edges, sprayed some water, and began to paint around those edges where I'd sprayed. The leaves got a wash of bright yellow coloring for the sunshine, and they would be getting more washes to make them more green. Orange and leaves? Why not? That's what I was seeing and that's what I painted. My next task was to lay in the colors of the butterfly. These butterflies have very distinctive markings, so I was carefully painting in the basic colors that would be covered on top and marking out where they were in place in, on each of the wings. Each wing had a different point of view from it. 
and had different coverage from the flower over it. I'm using a mixture of cadmium orange, yellow ochre, and burnt sienna here. And where I'm getting truly dark, I'm using sepia. In order to make the butterfly look like a painted lady butterfly, I had to retain certain markings in certain places. There may have ended up being a few more circles in this butterfly than there actually are on the real butterfly, but I was fairly faithful to the coloring. And here I'm marking in where the flower is blocking off the butterfly. I'm using purple paint because the blossom was purple. The wings are a little wet, the purple paint's a little wet. This is not strictly dry on dry painting. And I'm letting the colors attempt to blend just like they do on a real butterfly's wing. I think if, if I made them too hard edged, they wouldn't look as realistic. So I'm always aspiring to make the edges of these colors where they run together to be a little soft. Again, I'm laying in the patterns very lightly to show myself where I want to paint them in darker. And I'm using yellow ochres. And the most complicated part of this painting is getting the wing markings accurate or at least somewhat realistic. The top butterfly wing has a lot more showing than the bottom butterfly wing, which is largely covered by the blossom. These wings have strong whites in them, and from the underside they have strong reds in them. The red is a beautiful clear color, which is what's so intriguing about this particular butterfly. You don't see the red from the top. Another reason I chose this unusual angle. You might not realize that each wing has two separate components, an upper wing and a lower wing. The butterfly can separate these to some extent and bring them together to fly or to fold up. I had to find the logical place with the two wings separated. It's not always clear. And if they're folded over a little bit, you might see a shadow where one overlaps the other. Taking a break from the wing, I do, I do some detailing on the leaf. Here, where you can see where the orangey color is mixing into the green and making a nice natural green color. And I'm also trying to mark out some of the veins of the leaf. Frequently the edge of butterflies' wings have some small, very careful detailing in the way they're built. And that's taking some time to mark out how those edges go. But painting a butterfly, generally, for me, is a pleasure, and I don't mind finding all these little details. I find them fascinating, and I always have.
getting them right so they peek in and out of where the stem is overlapping. That's another little challenge, but it's fun. And next, those distinctive round spots on the back of each wing. I started to paint the spots in, and then I realized I better count how many there were and make it equal on each wing. I had laid some masking on that edge, and I just removed it. And then I continue the edging detail work. And I can see the wings starting to come together and looking more like a real butterfly wing. That one's come together pretty well, and now I need to move back to the top one because it's not right yet. I'm adding the red, that beautiful color, to the top wing. In this case, I'm using Quinn Red. It has a tone of pink to it but it is primarily a red color. It seems to take several glazes or layers to get the color true, but that's not a problem. A good part of the back wing is a tannish color that's then enhanced by the beautiful dark markings and those circles. So I'm laying in the base coat for the back wing. Also observing the structure of the wing and how the veins go through it and then inward toward the body where they attach. Working wet on wet, you could see the colors fade nicely toward each other and blend. And here I'm establishing the area where the two Wings overlap each other slightly in the structure of the top wing. Thinking with the brush when I wiggle it around like that and do it paint. I'm trying to keep clean and take off the masking as well. And then there's a lot of edging work to, to do on that wing. I'm bringing the blue sky down a little bit closer to the shape of the wing because I had made it too wide. As I bring that blue in over the white, I blend it ever so slightly so it will match the rest of the blue sky. And then I proceed with my edging. There's darks along the edge. There's some white spots along the edge. And then there's the tiny details. The veins in a butterfly's wing are frequently very dark. They set off the colors and help the wing to look like beautiful stained glass windows. One of the reasons we all love butterfly wings so much.
I continue to detail, paint, and bring out the colors. Here I'm replacing the remaining masking. The top wing is almost done. I'm pretty satisfied with the bottom wing. What I'm doing is adding another layer of the deep sepia color. Another glaze of the dark to make it stand out even more against the lights and the brights. Then I'm going in and blending and shaping the white areas that I have masked off to make them a little bit more delicate. adding very thin veins between them. Also darkening the sepia. I went out to the garden and picked some leaves from my butterfly bush outside. I picked a blossom too. And now I'm blocking off all of the picture, except for the blossom. I've torn in a regular edge on my paper that I am using the mask with, because I want the edge of the flower to be irregular, holding it down with erasers. And what I'll do next is, I'll give it a light spray with my water spray bottle. I'm trying to create an airy, delicate, flower. And then I drop in some good concentrated purple paint, some Quinn magenta paint. The paint spreads around in those little dots where I sprayed the water. And then I removed the masking and I'm spreading them around a little further just by dotting on water and some spray. Blocking the spray with my hand so it doesn't go into areas of purple that I don't want it to. The dense flowers were quite dark in areas where they were concentrated, but the purple showed through beautifully. So I'm laying in a very wet spray with purple paint and my water drops bottles. A little more water along the edge to let it spread. I think that worked out pretty well. I wonder how many of you will try it. It could also work for a lilac blossom. And then I'm tidying up the wings some more. I think that the blossom will need some more darkening in some spots and some more bright paint. But I'm going to work on the leaves so that it overlaps beforehand. I'm removing the masking from these leaves on the left. I'm using a mixture of sap green and yellow to make them nice and bright like they're lit up by the sunshine. Each leaf also has a darker side and I'm using a mixture of viridian and 
Hooker's Green Dark for that. Painting in the other leaves, which curled pretty. I'm trying to make sure I include those curls. And now I'm darkening around the blossom. I'm using a mixture of very, very dark purple. and a little brown where it overlaps the butterfly wing because it was strikingly dark there. And now I'm intensifying around the clumps of the purple <clears throat> Excuse me. In the blossom. I'm using a very dotty type of approach. Because these flowers are small and I guess you could call them dotty or almost pointillistic. In some areas, I'm also coming back in with my Queen Magenta. Having this mixture of dark areas and lighter areas in this clumpy flower help it to seem to have more dimensionality to it. I'm adding colors to the stem and trying to keep that strong light color on one side. That would be a strong indicator of a light source. Because there's quite a shine on the stem itself on the right. I'm paying attention, too, to how the leaves are attached to the stem and how they're growing out of it. A small detail that I think will help with the realistic depiction in this painting. There are some additional buds coming out of this stem, and that's what I'm painting in now. I'm using some thin lines, and then I'll attach some purple buds to the top of each one. There was one that came out in front of the butterfly as well. I had some trouble making that show, but after numerous tries, I finally figured it shows as much as it needs to show and it looks natural so I'm not going to worry too much more about it. I certainly didn't want to go in and start removing a lot of paint to make the purple buds show. Some more detailing around the clumps of the flowers. Now if you remember I put some masking all throughout the flower as well and I'm remo removing that now. You can see lots of bright white shining through.
So my decision here was, do I want to leave them bright white and look sparkly like that? Which is, I think, okay. Or do I want to put some blue sky showing through them? I decided on a mixture of about half and half. Some blue sky showing through, some more butterfly showing through, where I made the red of the lower wing peeking through. The next thing I began to think about was where the butterfly was blocking the light from the blossom. In the photograph it was quite dark. And maybe I should darken that area too. Because even though his body is very insubstantial, it still has some shadowing to it. So there you can see I've picked out some shadowing of the butterfly on top of the blossom. I continue to add some more darks just to show the structure and depth of this flower. And then I darken some of my buds as well. I add just a little structure showing through the flower clump where the stem might be suggested to show. But I did not make that solid or very dark. I didn't think it was necessary. What I'm doing with my brush is laying it out to show where the head and the body would be of this butterfly. And I need to place one antenna showing where the head and body would be blocking some light and make it a little darker. This just suggests the butterfly is there, even though he's covered up. And then I decided the blue of the sky is not as beautiful and blue as it needs to be. So I mix up a light layer of cobalt blue wash and glaze it on top of everything. I have to be careful, of course, not to paint over my completed flowers. I don't want them to run. I don't want the butterfly to run. But adding this glaze of blue paint satisfies me and makes me feel like the painting is saying more what that day said. Which was perfect summertime day. So there's my sky growing bluer. Touching it down around the flower. And touching in the little edges around. I don't recommend doing this at the very end. But it was worth it to me. I mean, I didn't wreck it. So no harm. What do you think? Would you have left it the lighter blue? Or do you like the deeper blue? that I changed it to. Well, everybody would have a different opinion. And this is what happened here. And I still have to get that single little antenna showing from behind the blossom.
And here's the antenna. Final detail edging. And I'm signing it. It is done. I hope you enjoyed my video watching Joyful, which was a painted lady butterfly, step by step. I hope you'll click on the links below and ring the bell. I hope you'll subscribe because it helps me out a lot. And then you won't miss any future videos either. Keep on painting, and I'll see you next time.